Um, hi, everyone. My name is Shreya today. I'm excited to share a little bit about the story of my first baby via separations that was born here at MIT uh, in 2017 with a lot of help from the Vish Pandey Center, a lot of knowledge about customers, customer discovery, and the, the pivots along the way. So just to set the stage a little bit, we spent um, VIA out of MIT in 2017 after I graduated in 2016 from my PhD. At the time, we were working on uh, new materials for water desalination. The idea was if we could make water cheaper, better, faster, then we could increase access to clean water by for all the 2 billion people in the world who don't have access to clean water. Um, what we learned through some of the customer discovery that we did through the Vesh Pandey Center was that the problem we were solving was not the ones that the industry had. We had solved a very nice scientific problem, but maybe not necessarily an industrial one. But what I learned before I graduated was that chemical separations offer an incredible opportunity for more energy efficiency, for increased production, and reduced environmental emissions. And so we pivoted over and started to talk to customers in the industrial sector. Uh, from there, we scaled up, changed industry a couple of times, and delivered our first field test in the summer of 2020. It was roughly the size of a mini fridge, and it absolutely did not work. Uh, we spent about a week to get about 20 hours of data, and we learned a lot in the process so that nine months later, when we delivered more of a U-Haul size pilot to the field, we could get that one to work and to show the customer that we could do what we'd been saying we could do. Today, we're preparing to break ground on our first of a kind commercial system uh, with a pulp and paper company in Alberta, Canada. And that's going to come online towards the end of the year. And there's about 10,000 square feet of pumps and pipes and membrane housings. And I'll get into the details in just a second. So what we actually do is we replace old inefficient thermal separation methods like evaporators and distillation columns with membrane filtration. So we've been separating chemical compounds from one another more or less the same way since the Industrial Revolution, accounting for 12% of US energy consumption and about 75% of the cost of producing a chemical. Because it's so energy intensive, because it's so thermodynamically inefficient to change the phase of the material when you boil things off. The analogy I like to use is today we boil off all the water in a pot of pasta to get to the pasta at the bottom of a pot instead of pouring it through a strainer, which at the industrial scale is 90% lower energy. It's fully electrifiable and it's more modular and demand responsive for the customer so they can increase their production uh, with the market uh, requirements that they've got. So on the left-hand side, I've got the, the evaporators, the distillation column, the right-hand side, that's our pilot system. Um, and our core enabling technology is the filter, the strainer that goes into the pumps and the pipes. It's a material science innovation. It was foundationally invented here at MIT as part of my PhD work, but has since taken on a very different life of its own. Uh, and although serves kind of the the, the core of our intellectual property portfolio, we are increasing the diversity of that with system level things, with characterization methods, with other balance of plant uh, components and manufacturing materials. So um, what we do is take graphene oxide, which is a very inexpensive um, cousin of graphene and functionalize it. And our secret sauce is the recipe and the scaling up of that graphene oxide recipe of formulation to be able to turn that into large areas of flat sheet membranes. I had this on the first slide, forgot to mention it, but over the last six years, we have scaled up that part of the technology by 100 million times through to commercial production at uh, competitive unit economics for that component of the system. And this matters uh, because of the emissions profile of the industrial sector. So on the left-hand side, I have broken down by industry the uh, emissions in the United States for each of the industrial sector. It's a total is about 30% of U.S. energy uh, emissions, sorry, U.S. emissions. 
When you look at what fraction of each of those sectors are the separation process and stack them all up against each other, separations account, emissions from separations account for more than that of steel, cement, agriculture, and mining combined. And because of that, we have the tailwinds of the Inflation Reduction Act, of the bipartisan infra infrastructure bill, and global decarbonization efforts at our back, pushing us forward and accelerating our progress. Our first focus application, our beachhead market, is in the pulp and paper industry, which is about a $5 billion market and represent 1% of global emissions. That's because one separation across all the facilities in the, in the world uh, is done the same way today by boiling off the water in the pot of pasta, and we're replacing that with filtration uh, units starting this year. Uh, so that system this year that's going in this year is the green building on the scope of the much larger uh, pulp uh, facility. Uh, this is going to prove not only that we can scale up, but that we can meet unit economics for our customers, uh, which I'll talk about in just a moment, and that we can uh, deliver both the safety, reliability, and operability that our customers require. The burden for proof for technologies like ours in the industrial sector is quite high. This is built on about 6,000 hours of field data, field operating data, over the course of the last two years um, at about a 1 100th scale. So we're scaling up 100 times. Uh, we are also going to be operating much longer than 6,000 hours, but all of that design and data has fed into how we uh, conceive of operating the system, maintaining the system, and the performance of the system for, for the customer. Um, when you look at how the customer makes decisions and how we're going to sell this product, we've settled on a filtration as a service model. In other words, we front the capital equipment so that the customer can avoid the capital budgeting hurdles that often take many years and slow the pace of sales so that we can retain that intellectual property and therefore can, can uh, control our first mover advantage in the industry because there will be copycats. And also because it allows us to uh, capture value on an annual recurring basis, which our investors really like for our, our returns. So on a particular project, once we install the capital equipment, we're looking at 60 to 80 percent margins. And a big important part of what I work on today is how do we finance those systems? What does that capital stack look like? And things that are completely unrelated to the technology working, uh, although that's obviously really important as well. So that brings me to uh, my, my last point, which is one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that building the organization is just as important as building the product. We've been a very lean, very doer-focused team over the last six years and are building out our management team today to be able to benefit from the experience in construction and delivery, the experience in debt financing, the experience in manufacturing scale-up, so that we're not reinventing the wheel uh, as two scientists coming out of Professor Jeff Grossman's lab, uh, learning how to do everything for the first time. Um, I want to say a couple things before I close, which is number one, uh, the Shpande Center was incredibly important for me as a CEO to learn about skill sets that were outside the lab. Um, I was really excited about the potential of starting a company, but didn't really have the framework of where to start, who to start talking to. Customer discovery was first introduced by Leon, eventually introduction to the NSF i and remains a really core cultural value for our organization as we scale beyond the pulp and paper industry into oil and gas, into chemical products, into pharmaceuticals, into semiconductors, pretty much anywhere there's a manufacturing sector, there are evaporators and distillation columns that need displacing. So with that, I'll close with this photo. This is our pilot system being loaded onto a truck after a six month deployment in uh, Southern Georgia. Uh, on the left-hand side is sort of our core component. Those tubes are what holds the membrane modules, uh, which is our core intellectual property. This system has two racks of about six, of six exactly, six membranes. Our commercial system later this year will have about 600 membranes. Uh, and, and we're really excited to, to finally have that impact on the world that we've been talking about for nearly a decade. So with that, uh, thank you very much.